Hello everyone, welcome to my video. Um, this is going to be a video of pictures. Um, it's uh, We went on our first cruise on the p and Iona in June in 2023. It was absolutely amazing. We had fantastic weather. The sea crossing was, was just like a mill pond. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, what I've done is I've put together a compilation of pictures. There's a few videos in there. Some some are some are, are short. Some are some are a bit longer. Um, but it just gives you an idea of what we did and what we saw in Norway um, on our trip when we went on the fjords. So uh, without further ado, I'll. Uh, have a look at the pictures, get a cup of coffee, and uh, enjoy it, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Your day at sea so far, and often it's becoming accustomed to all the beautiful Iona has to offer. So as is customary on our days at sea, I just wanted to take the time now to give you my little update on our progress so far, the weather, and also the plan for our arrival into Stavanger tomorrow. So following our departure from the berth in sunny Southampton yesterday, we made excellent progress on our journey south down through the Solent and were able to drop our pilot off at the NAV Tower to the east of the Isle of Wight at quarter past eight yesterday evening. From there we have covered a distance of 397 nautical miles as of now and we still have some 215 nautical miles to run to the Stavanger Pilot Station. Our present course is 015 degrees, just a touch to the east of New York, and we are making a speed of 18 and a half knots. We will continue on mostly normal easterly headings for the rest of today and into the wee small hours of tomorrow morning, and we transit through the North Sea towards the Norwegian coast, where my plan is to go to the Stavanger Pilot at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, and will then travel the 50 15 nautical miles or so through the approaches, and on reaching the narrow confines of the Nevada, we shall pyramid gracefully through 180 degrees and move a stern on to our berth, right in the heart of the city, where I aim to be simply alongside and all fast just before 9 a.m. That aside, the nearest point of land to us at the moment is the western coast of mainland Denmark. And with regards to the UK, we are 172 nautical miles due east of Tyne and Weir and the city of Newcastle. Weather-wise, it's still very pleasant indeed, with mostly clear skies and easterly wind can force four and most.
Assam, this is the, oh. the best morning view of Fula waterfall. Those of you who sit on a different landscape all the time so you start in the village where you are able to see all the fruit trees and everything is super green there as well but it's super warm as well and then you come into the valley area then the air is already fresher you would uh, need your jacket uh, you can see the rock slide and the landslide and from this part it, it's very beautifully visible uh, the U-shaped valley. They were formed by the glaciers throughout all the 40 ice ages that uh, Norway had had. It's quite impressive because I don't know if you've heard about it, but before those 40 ice ages, the, the, the land of Norway was quite flat, like no deep rivers, no canyons, no waterfall. It was like just a pancake. And then the ice ages, of course, with uh, the erosions and with the fact that, of course, the ice is splitting the rock and it carves deeper and deeper in the land. These wonderful, now super easily visible ocean valley were from throughout the glaciers because uh, even 20,000 years ago, when the last ice age uh, ended, uh, around uh, the land of Norway uh, the land was covered in about 2,000 meters thick ice and of course it has a massive weight and when it started to melt it, it through gravitation it, it slided to the lowest point so that's how these beautiful uh, fjords were created and after a while of course the curve was deeper uh, these canyons were, and these huge ships were even deeper than uh, the level of the sea. So when it reached, uh, actually, the sea, the water came in and filled up uh, those valleys. And the process did not end. We will have, of course, many other ice ages. Not right now, that's for sure. Um, and these fjords gonna cut deeper in the in the landscape. Also an interesting fact is uh, that because of the fact that this huge weight of the ice, the land was pushed down throughout the ice ages when the, this, uh, the sheet of ice melted since then, the land of Norway actually is raising all the time, a few centimeters. So we're currently today in Geiranger, the, the Norwegian Fjord Center is, was built is where in the Viking Age, uh, over 1,100 years ago, uh, the shore of the fjord was. It's, it's a bit more than 100 meters.
Okay, so we can stay here until 10 10. It's gonna be easy to remember, which means you will have wow, you will have more than 30 minutes. That's amazing. Um, so what to see here on the left, you have the skywalk and the artificial platform, but there is here also, I would suggest you this beautiful natural platform on the right side. You can have done the Eastern landscape of Norway. It's also beautiful. You can also build up this small, um, cairns, cairns of these st stone towers. It is said that once you build up once, you will return to the place in your lifetime. So if you wish to visit um, Skywalk again, just make sure you build up that small uh, stone tower. You, mm. you saw already the souvenir shop entrance. The toilets are outside, so you need to take the, the paths on the right. So now, oh my god, these, I mean, I love uh, people with campers, but can they, they think about other bus drivers? And are we gonna Ooh. take the shit of the dog now? <laughs> <laughs> From Germany, nice souvenir. Well, my, my uncle always says he's a driver that whenever I uh, go somewhere that, yeah, good luck, but in his way it's like just have um, a good slide under uh, with the car, which means like, um, yeah, everything should go fine. And now with these these dogs, we're gonna have a good slide. Uh, <laughs> so the entrance to the souvenir shop is on the left, but as you can see, the signs, the toilets are on the other side. If you need them, so at 10, 10 at bus number four, I know there's not much, many buses here, but just think, please make sure that you come back to me and Julia. Enjoy your time. unbearable for the right. Look on the right, if you're on the right side. There are all the little cars driving up and down. So this is the 500 meter of difference in height. I, you can feel here really like a bird flying over the mountainside. So thank you, first of all, for all of you being punctual uh, when coming back. This will allow us to spend really enough time at our, our next and but last uh, photo stop at the Feudal Gorge. I had a few questions during the break here and there, so I tried to answer, of course, uh, all of it, and also free, free to just to shout your question throughout the bus. It will get here for sure. So one of the question was, uh, if the snow here melts away uh, completely during uh, the summer, and yes, like most of the mountain peaks, there will be gray and black. So it is way more dramatic and beautiful right now. Um, oh, the cars are coming now. So we just had the perfect timing, like. So yes, yeah, so it's way more beautiful now in this period uh, of the time. The other question was if the fjord freezes over. Well, the gate of the fjord is 258 meter deep and salty water because it has connection with the, the sea. And although the melting water that arrives and falls uh, from the mountains, in sweet water, it can happen only that the upper sheet, when it's really, really cold, freezes over. But that's just in just uh, extreme cases, um, you cannot uh, go skating over it. Uh, but it happened. This winter was quite cold because generally the very average temperature are minus five plus five uh, degree. But this year we had minus fourteen. So part of the Geiranger Fjord was covered with ice uh, sheets. Mm 
basically and for the bigger uh, the bigger uh, boat it would not mean a problem but for example the rib boat they were trapped like they, they tried to go after like you know in the right after in the like in the shadow of the ferry and then uh, the ice just closed before them, right after the ferry. So they were trapped. Of course, people didn't panic, but it was really funny to see like a red boat trapped in the middle of Geiranga Fjord in the ice. Uh, maybe the passengers there did not find it that funny, but I find it, I find it super funny. And in the nearby Nufjord Eye, it was minus 23 degrees. So. This was an extreme uh, cold winter. We are not surprised by climate change that uh, the winter is going to be surprisingly from time to time colder and the summer is going to be like this. So maybe in a decade or two you can come uh, to Norway as if you were just visiting uh, South Spain and enjoy a mojito on the beach side of Geirangerina Fjord which has like 30 degrees. So who knows? Um, well, right now the mountain lakes, most of them are still frozen, but in the summertime it's really refreshing when I'm going for a hike and I just jump in and then I jump out because it's <laughs> you cannot really swim in it. If you have this now print outfit, quite usually for children they, they give um, a special swimming suit or like a bathing suit in order that they don't catch cold. But well, the secret is you need to move. So children are quite active, and um, yeah, but you will see people not swimming in the fjord, but more like just playing the children in the in the water, etc. And the adults they are always at the shore, so they're just watching over from the land the children. But after a while, somehow uh, people get more picky with the temperatures. Anyway, so the area of fjord does not freeze over completely, as I said. Uh, what freezes over are these mountain lakes, as I said, and I don't know who, who of you visited, for example, the Olden uh, Lake yesterday, or you've seen it uh, yeah. when you visited Brixdal. Well, <laughs> many of the drivers in that region, I don't know if they told you, but when they were like teenagers, what they did actually when they got a driving license and uh, the lake was frozen over, that's when they tested the full speed of the cars. <laughs> and uh, I have to tell you that is a very responsible um, decision because you need to know how you drive on ice. You cannot practice it on dry circumstances. You, you, you need to feel like what the car reacts. So it's, it's very good practice if you have at home a lake completely frozen, which is of course safe uh, to drive through with a car. And then you have like, you don't have the roadsides, the fences. You can like practice like how you drive the car. So it's, it's and in Norway you have to know how to drive on ice and snow because winter is quite present here, even though um, it's very mild in this area. So we are on the longitude of 6 to 2 degrees north. That in Alaska or Siberia would mean that, mm, well, you need really good coats and trousers and everything, and it's better that you stay inside, but indoors. But here, in, in, as in, for example, Geiranger, it's minus 5 plus 5 uh, degree. Celsius in Celsius, which will rise uh, as an average or winter time, and this is thanks to the Gulf Stream or the North Atlantic Stream that actually starts the Gulf Stream in the Gulf Bay in Mexico, and then it warms up <laughs> the the. Uh, that the warm water, the warm stream, actually warms up the whole coastline. So um, this is why Norway uh, could survive under these otherwise really harsh circumstances, uh, because they have on the coastline a quite mild winter and yeah, a quite let's say just uh, a summer bit full of surprises <laughs> and capricious uh, summer. And you could see just like a minute ago, a guy just walking down the Dal Snippa road. Uh, this Snippa Vegan uh, is a private road that we have to pay for it because um, it was not built together with the Geironga road. Uh, they did not have the financial uh, support back then. So it was built in the 1930s 
but of course during World War II it was not open, so they opened it, they really took it use uh, in the 50s, uh, but the money, uh, the, the, um, the habitants of Geiranger uh, founded a private uh, company, the Geiranger Schusslag, and they financed the, the road, so this is a private road you always have to pay for it, because there are some when usually when there's a special road built, a tunnel and, uh, or a bridge, the, the state uh, finances uh, two-thirds of the amount and the people who are using it, one-third. So and after this one-third is paid down, you can take it for free. But this road you always have to pay for. So quite often we can see some campers or cars parked down and then people just make a hike up this last five kilometer. They hike up, which is quite... Uh, a tough hike if you think about it's 500 meter in five kilometers that's a steep one so uh, it's no wonder oh before we cross the barrier here on the left you can see the dried birch barks that's what I was referring to that they insulate on the left side uh, near this house so this is what I mentioned that it insulates quite well uh, the houses and uh, nowadays of course there's a replacement for plastic but when they are renovating um, old buildings usually they use the plastic sheet and plus extra uh, the birch bark uh, because it needs to look authentic from the outside but also that it means that probably you don't have to renovate the house for the upcoming 15 years let's just see if anybody's key I cannot. Probably it's already too. Uh, the, the quality of the snow is already not good enough. sun cream that I brought with me <laughs> for this season and I definitely need to buy uh, new ones because this is gonna be just empty this this week and I'm lucky because now I'm you know like I'm not wearing like summer outfit because you have our uniform so like long trousers and like uh, shirts but uh, when you just go out then you need to cover like really your face your body and everything and then it just finishes in three days was regarding these boxes or houses little, little houses here you can see one on the left but what are those do they have anything inside are they like post boxes or no they are not post boxes um, they uh, well in the modern times we have all these wonderful machines that are cleaning the road from snow but until they arrived to our modern history um, people were manually removing the snow from the road and this area it's about five to seven meters um, uh, the, the snow that can cover the area so they used a bit of a trick that during the uh, autumn time uh, they gathered black soil uh, from the areas of course such as black soil as you can see it's quite rare to find they gathered soil and they needed to clean it so they divide they separate it from uh, from the the roots and the stones and etc. and then they dried it on the on the on the cliffs and then they placed it on these boxes and when spring came and it was about to open the road then they just spread over uh, the black soil on the snow and the sun when it shined it uh, actually warmed up that black soil so it mounted about one and a half two meters from the carpet amount of snow it was a huge help the record of snowfall is from 1979 it was 15 meters so 10 plus 5 so that two meters really counts now you can see on the right really beautifully this small stream just curving and finding 
its way through the snow. Wow, some Dutch people with a vehicle. I'm always surprised when Dutch people are coming here and they're not by bike because they, this is the usual way they, they would uh, drive from point A to point B in the Netherlands. But of course it's not as flat here as in the Netherlands. So, especially this road, um, it's part of the so-called scenic or panoramic routes of Norway. The symbol of it you will see a bit later on when we are nearing the Buddha. It's a brown shield with a white symbol like a flower. Altogether, until now, there are 18 scenic routes, and this road is part of it. It's called the Geirangir Trollstigen Road. The Troll Ladder is uh, also a panoramic street similar to the Eagle Road, what we soon gonna see on the mountainside. Uh, it's just the Troll Road is uh, even uh, short. Um, so not that wide, uh, even more narrow the road itself, what you take. So then the buses have a limitation of 12 meter. They cannot be any longer because then they cannot take the curve. Uh, they are just gonna decorate every corner when they take the turn. As actually this is what many trucks are doing each year because they don't pay attention that they cannot be that long. long. And of course they are driving uh, down the 11 uh, hairpin bands and then they are just ah, one corner, it's a bit, the fence is gone, and the next corner, then the fence is gone. So they can actually drive down, uh, but their vehicle is going to see the change, definitely. Um, and on, on the troll ladder, on the troll road, uh, quite often, not every year, I would say like every second year, what happens is that one of the Dutch or the Danish drivers, they have a panic, a panic attack because of the height, so they just stop on the middle of the road. So that usually our drivers get out of the bus, drive up or down the car, <laughs> and then uh, the traffic jam is uh, stopped. Of course, because in Denmark and the Netherlands is so fat that for them, this is like uh, half of Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. I remember I lived also in the Netherlands. I studied there two years, and I lived also in, for example, Rotterdam, and it's super flat, and I was driving my bike every day, and then one day I needed to arrange something in the Gemente, which is like a, you, you, the paperwork you need to go there. And there is the Erasmus Bridge. So I just drove my bike there and back. And the next day I could hardly move my legs because it was such a huge elevation difference than the days before. And now above us on the right you can still see the viewpoint of Skywalk with the Slipper. What are you doing? This was very unpolite, and now I'm saying, well, Blago, yeah, Julian does the right thing. He just sends him back. Yeah, you need to 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 learn your way of. Just because you have a fancy car, it doesn't entitle you to be impolite while you're driving. Oof, now they're gonna get up to dust in no about two seconds. No brain. Yeah, yeah, bravo. They they understood. <laughs> Yeah, there's an expression Norwegian driver quite often use here when the cruise ship Costa Caotica is here, and that is du or an e control. It means you are an I control. It means your intelligence quota is as high as a troll, so it means you're very stupid. <laughs> so you can just learn this phrase. You might will use it uh, in the upcoming days. I don't know where is the next port after Hellasund. Your cruise ship's gonna uh, visit? Uh, yeah, Al Alison. 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 Oh, it's wow. That's the most beautiful city of whole Norway. Is it? Oh my god, and it, oh, I'm gonna check the weather forecast for you for tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god, you you just wow. Um, I don't know who is the missionary for you, but did a really good job. I, I lived in Olesen two years as well, and I know it quite well. It's it's a small, but it's like a small jewel box, like really beautiful. Oh, let's check the weather forecast. If I have any internet here, wow.
very good evening, everyone. It's the captain speaking from the bridge. I do hope everyone is positively peachy and has had a most enjoyable day at sea thus far, soaking up this glorious weather. So, as promised, I just wanted to take the time now to give you my little update on our progress, the latest weather, and of course, the plan for our arrival into Southampton tomorrow. So following our departure yesterday evening, we have made superb progress on our journey south through the North Sea. And as of now, we have covered a distance of 411 nautical miles since departure from Hogerson. And we still have some 194 nautical miles to run to the Southampton Pilot Station. Our present course is 191 degrees, just a touch to the west of due south and we are making a speed of 17 and a half knots. We will remain on mostly southwesterly headings as we start to filter into the shipping lanes of the English Channel. I'm expecting to be passing off the White Cliffs of Dover at around 10.30 tonight, and then we will continue on and make our approaches to the Nav Tower Pilot Station, again that's to the east of the Isle of Wight, where we are due to collect our harbour pilot at the rather unsociable hour of 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. As soon as our pilot is safely on board, we will then make our way back up through the Solent and Southampton water and onto our berth at the Ocean Cruise Terminal for around 7am. Now, I will just pre-warn you that it is set to be a very busy day in Southampton tomorrow with a total of five large cruise ships in port. That aside, the nearest point of land to us at the moment is the UK and we are presently 25 nautical miles east-southeast of the Norfolk coast and seaside town of Great Yarmouth. As for the weather, well, it really is glorious, clear sunny skies with a gentle following breeze from the northeast and smooth to slight seas. Looking ahead to tomorrow in Southampton, the forecasters are predicting more of a cloudy day with the odd sunny spell, a light easterly breeze and temperatures reaching a high of 21 degrees Celsius, that's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, just a little reminder that due to the time difference between Norway and the UK, we will be putting the ship's clocks back by one hour at two o'clock tomorrow morning, so please don't forget to adjust your clocks and watches prior to retiring to the land of Nod this evening. So finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for choosing to cruise with us on board Iona, and I do sincerely hope you've enjoyed our cruise to Norway and the breathtaking fjords. I'd also like to take this opportunity to offer a heartfelt thank you to the fabulous crew of Iona, who I have had the absolute pleasure of being with since Iona became ours back in October 2020, and the way in which each and every member of the ship's company goes about their daily duties with such pride professionalism and enthusiasm and a smile on their faces never fails to fill me with pride. Now one thing we love as much as delivering unforgettable holiday experiences is hearing your feedback. And over the coming days many of you will receive an online questionnaire and it would really mean so much to us all in Iona if you could kindly take a few minutes out of your day to complete it. For those of you who are leaving us tomorrow, I'd like to wish you a very safe trip home, and on behalf of all the wonderful ship's company that is Team Iona, it will always be our pleasure to welcome you back on board, and it will most certainly always be my pleasure to be your captain. So for the final time this cruise, I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I wish you all a very good evening. Brilliant.